In the news for January 8th, 2014, period. Today, uh, they're trying to get, as a, the new director of Google, wants people to swallow a pill or a chip that will actually record what you do and everything that you say. And, of course, they have even, Verizon's has this a tattoo that are going to be coming out with soon that will be able to, you'll be able to get this tattoo from Verizon, which sounds cool. But it really isn't cool because they can actually track your movements and your emotions and also be able to read your mind and know what you're going to say before you say it. Because a chip actually does probe your mind and probes your brain wave patterns. We can't make this stuff up, people. This stuff is real. It's not sci-fi. This stuff they, the government has, you know, this technology is real. And a matter of fact, a new, and a matter of fact, when people, when somebody asked her about the privacy concerns, you know, the director of Google, all she did was just laugh. She said, just take the pill, you know, but I'm like wondering, are you taking the pill? Probably not. You know, and about all these other things they have us doing, are they under surveillance like we are? Probably not. The elite are not under any surveillance, but yet we are all under surveillance. Now, why is that? I don't know. But if we, if we got to be under it, they ought to be too. They want privacy out the wazoo. They got bodyguards, private bodyguards and armaments and things that go with them everywhere they go. Even Mr. Mr. Crazy uh, Mike Moore, he's got his own bar, bar, uh, a suit battalions and bodyguards and gun. he has his guns, but he wants to come and get your guns, you know? <laughs> you know, but it's all right for him to have all his armored chariots and, and guns and all, but it's not all right for us to have it. The average citizen, you know, who don't have a lot of money can't have it, but yet the rich people or the crooked and criminals and people that are really elitist people, they can have it, but we're not allowed to have it. And that sounds a little, that sounds not little, but really crazy because, you know, all people should be able to have and bear firearms for protection. That's why we have them. That's at least that's what I was taught in school. And that's not just for recreational use either. That's for all use and also mostly foremost for protection. That's why America has firearms, not not for entertainment purposes or <laughs> occasional huntings, but also for protecting your family. That's what it's for. So what I, my question is, is <clears throat> are these people crazier than, than Wonderland because they seem like they are? You know, they know they're not. I mean, it seems crazy, but they, they are really doing this stuff, people. I mean. You know, Verizon's coming up with a, a tattoo for authentication, which we're already talking. at t will probably come up with that same tattoo, too, uh, if you want it. But they can't put it on you by force. And then then you start eating food here pretty soon, you'll be swallowing chips by Menatrix, so chips in you. They say it's a claim to see, you know, how well it digests or what it does in your body. But I think it's also to see exactly what you say and what you do. Eventually, you'll poop these chips out, but the, every time you eat food... You know, you'll actually ingest some of these chips. So, you know, a lot of them will go out of your body, but some of them uh, will be in your body until they poop out, and the new ones will go in your body as you eat more food. So that's how they're able to do it because these chips can't stay in your body. They come out as you go to the bathroom, so new ones have to go in there so they can keep track of what you're thinking and what you're saying and what you're doing. Yeah, that's what they do. So I, I just want you to think about that. Um, and, uh, you know, just be careful because it's getting really crazy out there. Actually, in Texas, they said that the power grid situation in Texas, uh, the kilowatts have actually gone up a lot more in price down there because of the Obama and Obama's administration's coal crackdown on coal plants to shut them all down. Remember, he says, I, I beat my meat. I will shut down. You can help me get that food out my teeth. Mm. Uh, shut down the coal plants, and that's basically what he did, and that's what he is doing. So you know, even though he lie and gaslight it, but he he's a famous liar. He's a habitual liar. Everybody says all oh, politicians always lie, but he's told way more lies than most politicians would ever tell in their whole term. So you know, you can believe whatever you want or make excuses all you want, but we have a person that is not American that is a president. We have a person that does not believe in American values or traditions or doesn't care about the Constitution, does not care about freedom at all. All he cares about is his self and what he wants to accomplish is Muslim, his Muslim, Muslim, uh, GI'd uh, Muslim agenda. 
And that's really what it's all about. And he wants to solidify that with the New World Order. Because part of the New World Order is the Muslim agenda. You know, religion. Because all religions, all Muslims follow the same religion. So you can't say there's good Muslims and they're bad Muslims. Because they're all, if they're all Muslim, they're bad. Because they all want to take away all religions. They want to stop all other religions. Because that's what it says in the Quran. You know, if they don't, people that don't believe what we believe, they're against us, you know. But people who do believe what we believe, you know, that if they can be converted, then they'll be saved from, purged from persecution. But, you know, the Bible doesn't teach that at all. See, that's where there's a big extreme there. There's a big, but see, the only good Muslims there are are ones that have converted from Muslim belief to the Christianity. Those are the good Muslims. So there are some good Muslims because they're Christians, not Muslim anymore. They have forenounced their birthright. They have forfeited their birthright because they knew what they believed was wrong and they came to their senses and they were converted because they saw Jesus or a miracle happened and the Muslim faith couldn't provide that, but Jesus did and they actually changed it changed their life because of that. And there's a lot of that happening all around this world, even as we speak, to prove the Muslim that Jesus is the real Messiah. And I prayed for that, that prayer and God is doing it. And God is awesome. But the thing is, you know, that way a lot of Muslims could see Jesus and can make that choice to be converted if they choose to. You know, of course, there's a big toll and risk on them. But the ones that are real good Muslims, there are good Muslims. But the true Muslims, no true Muslim who follows the Muslim faith is a good Muslim. You know, just like people that followed Hitler weren't good Hitler people either. Just because there were people, they weren't good people. The only time they're good is if they convert it from being a Muslim to Christianity. That's when they're good Muslims because they're no longer a Muslim. They're a Christian. However, they're a Muslim heritage, but they're not a Muslim anymore because they're truly a Christian, man or woman, or child. See? Because they, what they did is they converted and they realized the truth, you know, of the Bible, what it says. So, you know, uh, you know, that's just, you know, how you have to look at things, you know, because really you do. Uh, so, you know, that's what we really want to, uh, to address here, you know, the, you know, when people say, well, they're good and bad Muslims, well, if they're still Muslims, they're bad, according to God, and they're bad because of their belief system, because they all believe the same thing. They kill everybody who does not believe their faith, is what it says in the Quran, you know, to do whatever is necessary to get people to be converted or to kill them if necessary, and that's exactly what it says in the Quran, because I've read it, and that is not biblical, and that's not even what God would do. God would say, you know, to work with people, if you can't work with them, then you just leave them alone. You don't kill them. And you let them make their own decisions because you can't force anybody to become anything, especially, you know, especially when, by fear or by other motives. But part of the New World Order will have a lot to do with the Muslim faith. And it won't be a godly one if we keep letting, allowing it to go this way because it's all tied in with the New World Order. Okay, because that because they're the ones that really are really authoritative and really controlling and really violent, and that's what they want to have as part of the new world order system. Which, like my grandfather, he would always say it's disorder because it is. It's foolish. It's stupid. It's based on a bunch of lies. It doesn't go with scripture, and you know we don't need to follow something that does not support godly values or support Americans' values, even if you don't believe in God. It does not support, uh, you know, what general freedom and what respect and honor and dignity is, because those are the real good things that we need to really strive to keep doing as Americans. Whether well, you believe in God or not, I hope and pray you do, but if you don't, these are things that are just built into America's machine and mechanism as programming, because dignity and respect and honor for other people and helping people is what America is known for. And what America really still, and what America is for, all, for a lot of people. Um, of course, there are a lot of people, there's a trend with all these video games and violent movies and, and all these things you see going on in the world and in the streets. And it doesn't look that good now because there's a lot of people that don't like, uh, that don't want to do that because they, they want to take things for themselves. So they think they'll risk everything. And they don't care if they kill people to get it. They don't care if they will run in front of somebody to steal that thing. Be will take it out from you, take it from you, especially when you had your hands on it first. You know they'll do things that are unfair, you know, unfair, and they will do things that are unjust to get what they want. You know, or the knockout game. You know, we see the knockout game where people running up to people and hitting them real hard, 
with something to knock them out and take their stuff. Well, that's that's part of that careless society because that's when society and the economy and everything starts to fall, you'll see a rise in crime like unbelievable proportions when it gets really, really bad, especially when the economy collapses. It's going to get really bad. So you think it's bad now. This is nothing compared to what it, this is a walk in the park to bear what it will be like when the economy does collapse. And that's what we don't want. You know, because if we had freedom in America and we had a just government and we had everything was with everybody following the laws and everybody was looking out for each other in the government as well as outside of the government and everybody was honest in the government. Because I believe there's still a lot of good, honest people in the government, but there are a lot of bad ones in there, too. We have a lot of people that don't belong there that are in the government here that are foreign, like Chinese people, you know, new, you know, globalists are in there. Some are working here. You know, making decisions on our behalf, which I have no business to be. It'd be just like me going over to the parliament and telling them what to do, you know, because I was elected or, you know, asked to come there, liaison to come there. Why in the world would they want me to come over there to make decisions on their behalf when I don't know anything about their culture or their, really much about their history? Or even though I might have been debriefed, but still that doesn't make me qualify to make decisions on their economic decisions unless it's based on their agenda to, on how to implode the economy and how to rob us blind. And that's really what it's about. That's why these foreign people are here, because they're here to destroy our economy. They're here to destroy everything we know. And it's just like, you know, the interesting things that happened in light with the Google development, you know, I was telling you about a few minutes ago, you know, that's all a part of this big plan. You know, it's to more control, more domination. Does that sound like freedom to any of you? Because that is not freedom. You know, freedom does not have anything to do with control or domination. Freedom is where you can express yourself. You know, you can say what you want. I mean, I wouldn't go around running around in a movie theater or in a store saying fire, fire when there's not a fire. But I'm talking about you say something you don't like. Like say, I don't like so-and-so or I like so-and-so. Or, you know, I, you can say your opinion whether people like it or not. And some people might think it's offensive, but hey, it's freedom of speech. And it might be offend somebody. You know, some things I might be saying might offend somebody. But it really isn't out to go after anybody. It's just how I feel. Because that's what makes this, this free, you know, freedom is what, that's what makes it so awesome. Because you can say what you want. And even though people don't like it and they might be offended, some people might get offended by it. But you know, you know, I get offended by things too, but I don't go and take people down on YouTube over it, or I don't go and report people over it because I don't like what they say because I'm offended by it. Because you know, hit my political correctness nerve button, you know. But you know, you know, but you just if you don't like it, just turn it off. You don't have to comment or report people. I mean, we got to grow up here, you know. I've seen people. I mean, me. Me, I've been known to comment back to these backstabbers. You know, when they comment on my channel, I do comment back because a lot of their comments are not founded or right and they don't think about it. They just write something just to say something to stir things up, but they don't really have any reason or emphasis for writing what they wrote. And that's what's wrong with a lot of these comments that people make. They don't really put no engineer, no ingenuity into it. They don't really think about what they say. They just let it come out their butt and don't even really have reason or non-reason why they made the premise or statement that they made in the first place. So, you know, we got to be careful what we say. But, you know, at the same time, we shouldn't report people because we don't like or agree. Because a lot of it, that's what it has to do with. It's not so much what they said. It's what you don't agree with. And it really offended you because you didn't say it first. Or it's because you didn't like what they said because it really challenged your way of thinking. Well, that's what makes America free. Sometimes things will do that, but it's no cost for removing people off of YouTube or banning them off of YouTube or reporting people off of YouTube like I see a lot going on because somebody did not like what somebody said. Because if we have a lot of that going on, then everybody on YouTube will not be able to be on YouTube because they'll just keep throwing people off and giving people notices and you know, that's what's going to really, really shut down YouTube because people are just going to take their channels somewhere else. And I, I'm, I say this for, I say this to help YouTube. You don't want to do that. You don't want to put an algorithm in there where someone says a certain word or says a certain phrase or have too many algorithms in there. And, you know, if it's just something they said, you know, I would not use a computer to do that because that's the problem what's causing most of this. Uh, you know, or because someone reported, I would look at it, you know, have somebody really look at the video and then discuss it with the person, the channel holder, you know, don't go and just quickly just block them or ban them off the channel, you know, really find out why they said it, you know, 
and, and work out other ways or solutions because it's not always a copyright issue. Sometimes it could be something you said that also causes these things to happen too. And you, because somebody don't like it. Well, there's a lot of things I see on YouTube that I don't like, but I don't go and ban those people. No. You know why I don't ban them? Because I believe in freedom. Because true freedom is just like that. You don't like something on YouTube? You know, where you see people getting their head shot off? Or, you know, I mean, that's on YouTube. They really have that. Or where that guy killed, I think they took the video down, but it was on YouTube. Where that guy, and he was on Facebook, and he, he's gone to jail. Because he showed it, he videotaped it and put it on YouTube and then put it on Facebook. That guy shot his wife and then cut, I mean, he cut her head off. Remember that? That happened last, that happened last year. Well, he's in prison on death row somewhere. American prisoner. Uh, he murdered his wife. An abusive, controlling, you know, violent, you know, creep. And that's where he belongs. He's a killer. And, but the thing is, he bragged about what he did and put it all over Facebook and YouTube. But that's something that does need to be taken down. But if somebody says something like, you know, well, I don't like Obama or I hate, you know, I, 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 you know, I hate purple people. You know, I'm just saying examples. I don't hate anybody. You know, I don't like, I don't like Obama's policies, but I don't hate him as a person because I believe God can still save his Muslim soul because he's not a Christian. He's a Muslim. And don't believe what he tells you, because a lot of the stuff he tells you is the opposite. He put his hand on the Bible, but he really didn't really believe it when he took the oath, because he, he don't follow the Bible, he follows the Koran. And so he used the Bible because that's what all other presidents used before him. And so he didn't want to break in, break with the tradition, but he didn't want to use the Bible. He wanted to use the Koran, because there was talk about that. But the thing is, you know, he is not a Christian. He is a Muslim. I don't care what anyone tells you. This guy is a Muslim, okay? He does not believe in stuff. But see, what I, this is how I feel. And a lot of people feel this way. I don't have nothing against the man. I just don't believe what he stands for. I don't think he's doing this for the American people. And I know he's a hand-picked puppet of the globalists. That's why he's doing a lot of these things. So it's not all his fault, but he's going in for it. Otherwise, you know, he'll probably end up getting killed somehow if he don't follow through with it. Like Reagan, he was shot because they didn't like some of the things he was doing. He didn't get killed, but he was shot. It was an attempt to, to set him back in line, as the New World Order or control people would say. we got to do something to set him back in line. And so that's basically what they did. When they shot Reagan, that's basically what they did. Well, with Obama, some accident will happen to him if he does not do or comply with what they say. And Obama, he knows this. You know, so if he decides to do something right, which I hope he does, and really starts being truthful instead of gaslighting everything all the time, and whitewashing everything or stonewashing everything, you know, I hope that he will honestly be the, tell the truth and say ex and do exactly what he says instead of doing the exact uh, 180, the opposite. You know, like when he says, I'm not going to put that bill into law, and it ends up going into law. See, that's what I mean. Or, I don't know anything about Fast and Furious, when yet evidence shows that he's the one that had the handprints on the signature, and he's the one that signed it into law. Oh, I'm not going to sign the health bill, care bill into law, Obamacare into law, and ends up getting signed into law. Oh, there's no death panels at all, ever, in there. Oh, it won't, it won't be a tax on people. When actually all those things are true, it is a tax on people. It is, a, it is, there are death panels in the bill. So, believe me, there's lies beyond lies. That's the things I don't like about Obama. It's not him because he's black or because he's a Muslim. It has nothing to do with race at all. Or, as I say, he's not, a, I don't, I'm not going to say he's an African American because he's not. He is black Muslim. So I don't, I'm not going to say he's from Africa. Just because they're black doesn't mean all blacks come from Africa. Because not all blacks do. You got blacks everywhere. You got blacks born here in the United States. So it doesn't mean just because they're black that they all truly came from Africa and America. Came from Africa. Because not all of them did. If you come over here and you transferred and you have, you're born here, you're not African anymore. You're American. Now the ones that transferred a long time ago, like your moms and dads before you, they were African who ran from oppression and rulers and dictatorships. That's why they came here. You know, they came here as a slaves, but then they were free because of the Emancipation Act that was put in place to free slaves. And that was wonderful. And, you know, a lot of people from when I read, cause I, you know, I have friends that are black and they let me see their history books. And in their history books in the schools, you know, they say that blacks actually put blacks in slaves. 
I know blacks, a lot of blacks probably don't want to hear a white person say that, but actually it was blacks that actually put their own kind in slaves first. And then it was the white people that actually gained that concept. And then they started putting blacks in the slave, which was wrong. But that's what happened. First, they, they saw blacks putting blacks in the slaves, and then whites actually started doing it. So you can't blame it on the white man, because I know there's a lot of people out there that want to blame that on the white guy. But it's not the white guy or black people. you got to realize all this war about race has been going on for centuries. So, you know, I mean, me, I think it was, you know, whether blacks were doing it or whites or red, white, and blue or purple or whoever was doing it, putting people in slavery, you know, blacks in the slavery, I think it's horribly evil and it's wrong. And I tell you, if I was back there and I had power over the matter, I would not have allowed that to happen to any black people. Because I don't think anyone should be a slave, even today. I don't think, even though there are slaves today. And I'll give you an example. of Somebody say, oh, there's no slaves today. I'm not talking about here. I'm, but if we keep going, they will be here. Because we're going to be in camps. Okay, there's camps that talk about FEMA camps, concentration camps. They are all over the United States, okay? And they round up all the people. Okay, that's what's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. But it will if we don't, if we don't stop this. And, you know, we don't. We, we we say no to go bomb and say no to the world banks and say no to the globalist agenda, which is being pushed on us by force all around and war all around at all sides. But what I want to say, if, you know, slavery is wrong, it was evil. It's a shame that it happened to the black race. It was a shame that it happened, you know, and like more about slavery, you know, China has these, you know, people that make your electronics. A lot of them are working by forced labor. They get paid a very, a lot less money than what we get paid. You know, that's, I'm not I'm not lying to you. Uh, they work in a factory, and they make a real low minimum wage, far lower than what the United States gets or when they do work. And uh, that's what they want to do worldwide. And a lot of places they're already going to that. They call it forced uh, encampment uh, factory labor. And so, you know, they're basically you are a slave to the person who you're working for. Even though they're not saying that word, but that's what it is. They say forced labor, that's a slave or a factory worker. That's a form of being a slave. You know, or um, they'll use different words like, you know, you know, they'll say, well, um, you know, a pallet driver. You know, those are the words of, you know, that would lead to a slave, you know. Uh, or say if you're working on the floor in a store, any store, that would be a form of being a slave. Even though they're not saying it, but... You know, of course, over here in America and Walmart and everything, we get, you know, good wage. You know, it's good for that kind of job, but it wouldn't be good to support your family for a long term. I mean, you would have to get a better paying job to support your family more than what Walmart could pay you. Unless you were like the head manager or something, that's the only way that would work. But see, that's still a form, an early form of slavery, you know. And I know some people might disagree with me, but if you look at history, they use all kinds of terms to kind of, say that those kinds of work are like small euthanisms or small Hittites of really, really, really mild forms of slavery or enslavement. So, you know, what I'm saying is if you got to go to a job and you have to work for a certain amount of days or you have to inconvenience your life or where they change the schedule on you without noticing you got to check it every day, that's a form of slavery. And even that happens here in America. You know, and it's been happening. I'm not going to say it's happening at Walmart, but I, it happens at any retail store. You know, because they'll tell you that. You have to check your schedule every day, you know, because your schedule can change. You know, you don't have a life when you work for retail. Your life is basically subject to them as long as you're employed by them. I mean, yes, you get paid a good wage, and yes, it is fairly good working conditions, but it's still a form of slavery. Okay, and you might disagree with me because... You know, you don't see, you're not really thinking with your brain. You, you don't see the connections. Look at history. I challenge you, look at African history. You know, look at the Chinese work or, or what I call the sweat factories over there where they make all your iPhones and iPads and, you know, iPad Airs and all that, you know, other electronics and, a, and proponents that go into our boards here to make our electronics and many of the things that you have in your homes, like vacuum cleaners, washer machines, and so on. And you'll see, you know, people there will give labor why they are working. They, if they're pregnant, they will give labor there and even abort their babies there why, why they're at work. 
You see, so that's sort of like forced slavery. It's like a slavery camp. Because that's what they want to do. They want to have that model acclimated all around the world where you go to work and you are in a camp. And that's what's going to happen here if the New World Order gets its way. That's why it's so important that us as Americans wake up. We don't want to be under slavery or control or be sort of like we're in a prison grid or we're tracked every moment, every second every of our days because that is not freedom, okay? That is called being in prison. When a government knows your thoughts and knows my thoughts and knows everything, just about everything, what you're going to do, they're not going to know everything, but they're going to know 90% of it. When they get their way, if this goes in effect, I mean, they already have these boxes up on the poles and in the lights trying to hear what you're saying from mile, eight miles away, you know, or two or three miles away, you know, how they can pull things off your cell phones and all. And we told you about the pothole cutters that, the covers that are routers that are in New York City and in trash cans that are in a lot of cities all across America that have hot spots in them, but they do more than just hot spot. They get stuff off your phone to see what you're talking about and it gets sent to the NSA. So all this stuff's public information is classified because uh, because it's actually been uh, verified and also been talked about by a number of public sources uh, in newspapers that have actually reported like Reuters and also Drudge and New York Times and things like that, just to name a few. So you can't say I'm just saying something that's, you know, that's illegal because, or something I shouldn't be saying because it's actually this stuff's been public already. And they brag about it. You know, they can do this technology. And even though a lot of people have protested that shut those things down, they said they stopped them. They lied to you because those boxes, every one of them in all those areas, just the reason why I said it is just to make a publicity stunt so you all would back down so there wouldn't be a debate or discussion about it. You know, oh, well, we'll just tell them we'll turn them off. And then <laughs> they'll all just, you know, forget about it and go back to sleep. You know, that's probably what they're hoping for. But you don't want to do that because, you know, you know, even though they told you, that they cut those boxes and those routers off they intercept your telephone conversation before they hit the towers <laughs> and all your data before it hits the towers. They're actually swooping a vacuum and then that stuff up with these boxes. And it goes right to the NSA and the police and everything else. And, and not, not only that, it even goes to other governments that aren't even here, like are in other places of the world. What do you think about that? They get your data too. So it's like all the global, the world, new world order is all behind this. They get your data in other countries too. You know, it's like swooped up, you know, and it gets spread around so it's not only america that has this data but foreign countries have it too and that's really scary it's, that's not freedom folks that is not freedom at all you see what i'm saying and this is something they're doing all over the world so it's not something here in america but we, people worldwide as citizens should be concerned about this because this is wrong anyways this is in the news for january the 8th 2014 i love you you think about what I'm saying. Don't take it personal because I didn't take it personal when I said it. I really thought about what I said. And I hope that you can see it as a mature person and a rational person what I'm saying. So I'm not racist. I don't hate anyone. I don't care what color you are. I want you to know that because I really truly mean it. I'll see you later.